Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're having a lovely day and I am very happy to have you here. Happy Pride Month. It's June. Woohoo. Uh, today's video is related to the fact that it is Pride Month. I am going to be giving you my June TBR um, but they're all queer novels because it's Pride Month and I want to read some queer novels for Pride Month. I want to read queer novels all the time but um, I'm dedicating myself to only queer novels for Pride Month. Okay so the first novel that I would like to read this month is The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. I've been meaning to read this book for a very long time. I bought it for myself a couple of months ago. It's been on my list. Uh, I'm finally getting around to it. I've just started it but I'm only like literally only a couple of pages in so um, I don't actually know anything. I just know that I'm going to read it this month. The Colour Purple is set in the deep American South between the wars. The Colour Purple is the tale of Sally. I'm not sure that I've said her name correctly. I'm going to check uh, and I'll put down here if I figure out how it's actually pronounced. I'm very sorry. A young black girl born into pro poverty and segregation. Raped repeatedly by the man she calls father, she's two children taken away from her, is separated from her beloved sister Nettie and is trapped into an ugly marriage. But then she meets the glamorous Shug Avery, singer and magic maker, a woman who is taking charge of her own destiny. Gradually, Sally discovers the power and joy of her own spirit, freeing her from her past and reuniting her with those she loves. The Colour Purple is a classic with over a million copies sold in the UK alone. It is hailed as one of the all-time greats of literature, inspiring generations of readers. So yeah, I'm very excited to read this. I've been meaning to read it for a very, very long time and I am glad that I'm finally getting around to it. I can't wait to tell you what I think. Next up is Final Draft by Rayleigh Redgate. I bought this book at the end of March, I think, uh, and I'm getting around to reading it this month, hopefully. The description for this one is Leila Piedra doesn't drink, doesn't smoke and definitely doesn't seek into the 21 and over clubs on the Lower East Side. The only sort of risk Leila enjoys is the peril she writes for the characters in her stories. Epic sci-fi worlds full of quests, forbidden love and robots. Her creative writing teacher has always told her she has a special talent. But three months before graduation, Leila's number one fan is replaced by Nadia Nazarenko, a Pulitzer Prize winning novelist who sees nothing at all special about Leila's writing. A growing obsession with gaining Nazarenko's approval and fixing her first ever failing grade leads to a series of unexpected adventures. Leila is soon hiking through the Catskills during a thunderstorm, discovering the psychedelic highs and perilous lows of nightlife and relishing the beauty of temporary flings and ambiguity. But, her sa but with her sanity and happiness on the line, Leila must figure out if enduring the undurable really is the only way to greatness. There you go. The next book that I would like to read is Maurice by E.M. Forster. This is, oh this version has an introduction by David Leavitt exciting. I always like an introduction actually. I don't know if that makes me a nerd but I am a fan of an uh, introduction. Uh, I'll read you the blurb for this novel too. Maurice Hall is a young man who grows up confident in his privileged status and well aware of his role in society. Modest and generally conformist, he nevertheless finds himself increasingly attracted to his own sex. Through Clive, whom he encounters at Cambridge, and through Alec, the gamekeeper on Clive's country estate, Maurice gradually experiences a profound emotional and sexual awakening. A tale of passion, bravery and defiance, this intensely personal novel was completed in 1914 but remained unpublished until after Forster's death in 1970. Compellingly honest and beautifully written, it offers a powerful com condemnation of the repressive attitudes of British society and is at once a moving love story and an intimate tale of one man's erotic and political self-discovery. The introduction by David Leavitt, Leavitt explores the significance of the novel in relation to Forster's own life and as a founding work of modern gay literature. This edition reproduces the Abinger text of the novel and includes new notes, a chronology and further reading. 
So there you go, the Penguin Classic Edition of Maurice, Maurice by E.R. So there you go, the Penguin Classic Edition of Maurice by E.M. Forster. I'm so excited to read this. I've been so excited to read this since Christmas and I just keep not getting around to it. But I'm going to read this one, hopefully. Uh, I'm also really excited to watch the film once I've read this. I refuse to watch the film until after I read it. But Hugh Grant plays Maurice in the film and young Hugh, Gr young Hugh Grant and young Hugh Grant is basically my favourite person to have in films ever. I think he's brilliant. Um, so I'm very, very excited. It also has a... The first half of it is apparently quite academia based which I love in a novel I love the vibes of that in a novel and I love that and I love it even more in film so I'll be excited to watch the film and enjoy all of the uh old tiny Cambridge clothes that I wish I could wear every single day and the last novel that I would like to read this month that I haven't read before is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Byron or Byron I'm not sure which of those, if any, is the pronunciation, but I'm hope I hope I'm close. Uh, and the blurb for this is: It's two hundred years since Cinderella found her prince, but the fairy tale is over. Sophia knows the story through, off by heart, because every girl has to recite it daily, from when she's tiny until the night she's sent to the royal ball for choosing, and every girl knows that she has only one chance. For the lives of those not chosen by a man at the ball are forfeit. But Sophia doesn't want to be chosen. She doesn't want to go to the ball at all. Not when she's afraid the girl she loves might be chosen too. Pushed beyond breaking by a society that denies everything she is, Sophia sets out on a journey that on a journey that will remake her world into one where she gets to choose. Exciting! I've been meaning to read this for a very long time. I'm not like a massive like fantasy person and I wasn't sure how fantasy this would be which kind of put me off for a bit but in the end I was too intrigued not to give it a go and I mean look at the cover of this book it's absolutely stunning I had to have it uh so I'm very excited to read it uh and then last up if I have the time there's actually a couple of these things that I'm like if I have the time I'd like to but I'm trying not to be too ambitious but if I have the time this month and I read my books that I haven't read before that are on my TBR I will probably reread Aristotle and Dante because it is a queer novel and it's my favourite book of all time and you can never really go wrong reading this book again and again and again and again so here it is uh, I'll read you the blurb for this because I don't think I've ever actually read the blurb when talking about this before so um, I will read you it but you've heard me talk a lot about this book so I'll try and keep it brief Dante can swim Ari can't Dante is articulate and self-assured. Ari has a hard time with words and suffers from self-doubt. Dante gets lost in poetry and art. Ari gets lost in thoughts of his older brother who's in prison. Dante is fair-skinned. Ari's features are much darker. It seems that a boy like Dante, with his open and unique perspective on life, would be the last person to break down the walls that Ari has built around himself. But against all odds, when Ari and Dante meet, they develop a special bond that will teach them the most important truths of their lives and help define the people they want to be. But there are big hurdles in their way, and only by believing in each other and the power of their friendship can Ari and Dante emerge stronger on the other side. There you go. I promise you this book is worth reading. Okay, so that is all for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you have found a book that you'd like to read this month. Let me know in the comments what you're reading for Pride Month this month or just in general what you're reading this month and I'll see. Let me know in the comments what you're planning on reading this month whether that be queer novels for Pride Month or just novels that you're planning on reading this month in general or plays that you're planning on reading etc etc. I hope that you have a wonderful day. I hope that you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next week. Bye.